That open always makes me think, and I need a haircut is what I was thinking this time. I had a nice military style cut, but we will get a cut eventually. It's warmth, right, for the current time of year? Yes, but, but I still need a haircut. March okay. is coming. It is. And we're excited about that as we welcome you to Faith and Friends. Andy Lynch, Jennifer Beck. Mark is nearby prepping for a big <laughs> trivia match with Ben Reif and Matt Finkel. You do not want to miss that. Uh oh, and that's right. Coming up, trivia in honor of President's Day, which we've decided to celebrate all week. Also coming up on today's show, hopefully you recall the TV 44 auction. It takes place every year in September. Well, one of those auction items was recently cashed in. We'll have more on that coming up. And if you received our recent newsletter, then you had a chance to read about some exciting changes involving Andy, and we'll dive into that more in just a moment. Yeah, I'm going to be shorter in a few weeks. Hmm. Just cutting off a few inches, and I'll be six foot. That's the bit. <laughs> now, we've got other <laughs> exciting news, but let's first get to our verses of the day. These are the first things that connect us to President's Day, interestingly enough, which is celebrated this year, February the 17th. First two verses were once were connected to Abraham Lincoln. Matthew 7, 1, judge not that you be not judged in Revelation 16, 7, and I, Another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Both of these verses used in Lincoln's presidential inauguration. And our third verse of our day, it's one of my personal favorites actually because it talks about running. Oh, running for runner. president? Well, perhaps. No. I'll let you do that. Okay, I'll do the verse. Isaiah 40, 31, <laughs> or you let me run for president. You can do both. Well, thank you. But the, I'll vote for you too. 2048, is that the next? Uh, time I'm eligible. <laughs> Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. No matter where you're at, whether you're running at this point in life, whether you're walking, whether you can barely crawl, there's encouragement to keep going, keep moving forward with God's help. And we have 44 presidents who have, I would imagine, regardless of where they are in our faith, recognize they need encouragement. I would hope they recognize they need God's help. Yes. No question about it. We all, <laughs> if you're leading a country, I mean, I would hope you would realize you can't do it all by yourself. We would certainly hope that. Well, here at TV 44, we happen to have some pretty sharp historians, I'm and we are going to focus on President's Day right now. Tell me what we have coming up. Well, our WSM production manager, Ben Reif, he's, I think he was a historical or a, a political science He's major. He's really smart, we should just he say He knows that. a lot. He came up with questions by himself. We know Mark Kuntz is great at trivia. And so we threw Matt Finkel into the mix. He's one of our new guys here, kind of like the Harlem Globetrotters and the Generals. You know, the Globetrotters have to have someone to play. So Mark <laughs> Kuntz has someone to play. And Matt, I think he's going to do a great job. Ben? Thank you, Andy. I'm going to try not to be a sleazy, typical game show host here. So for today, you can call me Honest Abe. How's that sound? Is there a home version of the game that will be available? There is not. <laughs> These questions weren't Googled. These are out of my head, so who knows where that takes us. We'll start easy. Who was the first president to live in the White House? John Adams. Ding, ding, ding. Well okay, is done, a Mark. System or just nope. I just okay. shout it out. Right. He moved in in 1800. Second question. What is Harry Truman's middle name? S. Just the letter. Just the letter, yes. He was named after his grandfathers. Ship and Solomon were their names, but they didn't want to come or they didn't want to pick one or the other, so they just went with S. It's not an abbreviation. I knew that one, but you're just you're too. He's bad. quick. <laughs> yes. He is quick. Who was president when the White House was burned by the British? Madison. James Madison, correct, and Mark on fire, no pun intended. One of two items to survive the fire was the picture of George Washington that's become very famous. Which president gave away his lucky red carnation moments before he was assassinated? McKinley. Whoa, can't stump him. Yes, it was at the Pan American Exposé in Buffalo, 1901. He gave it away and literally seconds later was assassinated. I appreciate you giving me the second to actually try. <laughs> I was going to guess Lincoln, but I didn't know. Not a terrible guess. Who was credited with carving Mount Rushmore? It's a French name. It is a French name. Guiteau. <laughs> Close. You want to make a guess, Matt? I have no idea. I thought that you had, all the answers were going to be presidents, uh, not... Yeah, well, you know, I thought about saying that it is multiple choice. Yeah. There's only 44 choices. I have no idea. Uh, no, it is Guts and Borglum. Uh, I personally was very disappointed to discover that it was not a natural phenomenon. I thought it was one of the <laughs> great wonders of the world. Um, this question is about FDR. FDR was the longest serving president at 13 years. Can you tell me who was the shortest? 
Well, Mark and I discussed this. Is it the guy who died from the bad cherries? No, it's not. It's William Henry Harrison. When William Henry Harrison, or uh, more popularly known as Old Tippecanoe, he uh, died after 30 days in office. Now, many people incorrectly believe that it was because he gave an over two hour long inaugural address and then in a pouring rain, yeah, without a coat and a hat. But in fact, he, he caught a cold three weeks later after that and, uh, and died eight days after uh, getting the cold. Good, good job. Which president's inaugural party at the White House got so out of hand that the president escaped through a win <laughs> window and the drunken mob only dispersed when bowls of liquor were placed on the front lawn. You are correct. It was Andrew Jackson. Mark the, was there. The, yeah. Oh, wow. Ah. I'm getting old jokes that's, now. That's a low Where's blow. Darren Lozier when we need him? <laughs> the White House doors were open to the public for the party and anarchy ensued. Uh, next question. William Seward, responsible for Seward's Lincoln. folly. <laughs> oh, you can't touch a mark. I still don't even know what the question is. <laughs> <laughs> which, which was, uh, who was William, or William Seward was which president secretary of state? And it was Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Uh, many thought the Alaska purchase was too expensive. Oil probably would have changed their minds in modern times here. Uh, has any president ever been convicted of a crime? Yes. Matt? I'll say no. No is actually the answer. There have been many accused of them, but nobody has ever, ever actually been convicted and uh, served time in prison. You can judge whether double standards or they're just all model citizens. Uh, I'm sure okay. they would have been pardoned anyway. <laughs> exactly. Everyone knows that JFK was the youngest president, but who was the oldest? This one I think I know. Can you give me a second? I'll give you a second. <laughs> all right. Take all the time you need. I believe it was Madison. No. Madison was the shortest. Madison might yeah. have been the shortest. No, he was, yeah. right? Madison was the, the shortest. Old, oh. <laughs> Did a little research, but I forget now. The oldest? I don't know. Isn't it Reagan? Ronald Reagan, right. yes. He was 69 years old when he was um, elected. Which two future presidents served on the committee responsible for writing the Declaration of Independence? Jefferson. Jefferson. Correct. And John Quincy? No, too young. John Adams. John, John Adams. Adams, John Quincy's right. father, right, John right. Adams, yes. Jefferson actually wanted John Adams to write it, and John Adams said, no, I'll just coach you through it. Um, which president was never elected to the office of president or vice Gerald president? Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford, absolutely. Speaker Ford replaced Makes Vice sense. President Sparrow Agnew when he, he resigned. Wasn't speaker, he was speaker, he was minority leader. Minority, you, you are correct. And then, then he replaced Nixon when Nixon resigned. So never elected to the office of president or vice president. Okay, final question, and this one might take a little bit of a turn. In which Georgian town did FDR purchase a retreat after Warm becoming Springs. convinced it would cure his paralysis? You are correct. Warm Springs. He went there 16 times as president and even died in the cabin um, there called the Little White House. Very good. I, I think we can both agree that Mark knows his presidential trivia. I would That's just like to apologize to my high school history teacher for <laughs> such a poor display. If you are watching, Mr. Puglisi, I am terribly sorry. Mark, that was impressive. But we knew that. about. My goal here is to stump Mark in presidential trivia. We still haven't done it. Ben, still, shy the questions. Still I'm going to think of questions and make sure I can do yeah, it at some point. Mail in your questions. We'll see if we can stump them. <laughs> There's a lot about presidents I don't know. There we go. Thank you for watching our presidential trivia. Enjoy your President's Day. All right, thanks guys. Wasn't that great? I think Ben Rife sits at home in front of his mirror and just practices comebacks and witty. We gotta start a game show for Ben. Dancy Moeller, look out. <laughs> ben Rife's coming. And you know, I, I, I think I would have been right there with Matt. Yeah, um, I had no idea. But Matt, got one Matt more right I think I Matt would. held his own quite well. It was fun, it was a lot of fun. I do have my presidential cards here that we use in our homeschool. You were quizzing along with, weren't you, trying That's to find right. the answer one? Yep, but I would need these with me if I'm going to answer. Yeah, it's very impressive. Very yeah. good. Well, we oftentimes receive prayer requests from you at home asking us to pray for our government and for our leaders. So we're going to move Presidential Day and Presidential Week, as we are calling it, uh, to more of a, a serious focus for a moment. Andy, let's just take a moment and, and do just that. Let's pray for our leaders who, as you said earlier, have such a huge job to lead our country and they we really want them to have God at the forefront. Let's definitely do that. Father, you, uh, you work through our leaders and you certainly have them in their places. Uh, you are controller overall. And we just pray that they would give their service to you, uh, the government. Some things we agree with, some things we don't. We certainly need you to be involved and leading. And we uh, just pray for, for the, our leaders to realize that, to realize that you are the ultimate uh, leader, president, ruler. You are God. And we thank you that you are ultimately in control. 
in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, the latest Take One newsletter was mailed into homes last week, and hopefully you've had a chance to read it. You can also find it online at WTLW.com. And this latest edition features several stories about sports and FCA, and there's a purpose behind that. Some information about some exciting things taking place in the coming months, and they involve somebody that you know quite well. He happens to be sitting next to me. Uh, Hi. So you're gonna you're gonna become six foot tall. That's the news. That's the big news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're excited for for a huge transition. Um, really started a year and a half ago. Mission trip to Mexico, and God said one of the things that that I got out of it from God was to go feed my sheep. That's what He was telling me, and, and that's really a command for all Christians. We are to feed those who are God's sheep. We are to encourage those that are new believers, that are believers not as long as us. We're always supposed to be building into those lives. So I took it as that, but I also had a feeling that it was going to be more, that God had something in store. Uh, last summer, my wife and I started praying, well, what is that more? What do you want? And we thought maybe I'd be a pastor at a church, and I had some opportunities to possibly go down that path at a couple different churches. But in November, uh, God said, okay, you followed. You, you were willing to get out of TV. You don't have to. This is the plan that I have for you. And there's a great arrangement between TV44 and Fellowship of Christian Athletes that will start probably here coming up in the next few months. Officially, it happens in June, where I get the opportunity to still be here, still come into your living room uh, via your TV set. I won't actually visit your living room unless I'm invited. You know, that'd be cool to come over and say hi. But I will still be here doing sports, doing Faith and Friends. I love the fact that I get to be a part of TV44, a great ministry, and I'm very excited to become a part of Fellowship Christian Athletes even more and just dive into the lives of students, of coaches, to be in schools, to be an encouragement, to be a light so that people can see what they need. We all need Jesus. That's what Fellowship Christian Athletes is about. That's what TV44 is about. And I'm so thankful for Kevin Bowers, our general manager, seeing the big picture and willing to partner with other ministries. You know, ministries, there's so many all over the place, but he realizes, and, and we realize, that we're all in this for one thing, to, to show people Jesus, to encourage people that have faith, and to show people that don't have faith what they're missing. So, big transition, but I'll just be around more. So, there. Well, the people who, <laughs> who only see Andy at home may not realize, uh, through your television set, of course, may not realize <laughs> the transition is taking place. It's going to be a big transition for us here at the TV station, but as, as you heard, Andy's heart is to reach people for Christ, and I have been blessed to see that firsthand over the past year. Um, I just got to tell you, this is, this is a class act guy. Um, he really does want to do the things that God wants him to do. And, and it's been neat to watch over the past couple of years your interaction with FCA. And, mm -hmm. and as I heard you, you you say to the viewers, you know, your, your duties here at TV44 are going to be lessening some so that you can take on more FCA role. And over the past couple of years, you've spoken to dozens of huddles. Um, what does that mean to be able to go into the schools, to be able to share the love of Jesus, and to be able to inspire these kids to, to do that same thing? Well, the kids just need encouragement. I mean, I mean, there's so many hardships. We faced hardships. I'm 34, almost 35, and I faced hardships, you know, 15, 20 years ago in high school. Uh, I'm sure some folks watching at home maybe that, that faced it even longer before that. But today's youth faces so many different trials, so many different uh, media inundations, you know, you know, just so much coming at them, so much worldly things. They need support. You know, they need to know that there are people that believe in God and that want uh, their faith to grow. So that's one thing. Another thing is that there are kids growing up in households that don't go to church, and so they've never known going to church on Sunday mornings. They have no idea that God's supposed to be even a part of their lives or that tithing is important. You know, any of these biblical things that I grew up because I went to church, and, and whether or not you know, I was close to God growing up, at times I was, at times I wasn't, at least I had an idea for what was supposed to be. And so just to be in the schools and show them the hope that they have through God, through Christ who's died for them, uh, that's really exciting. A chance to meet with teams I'm really excited about. There's things called team times with FCA where you go to a basketball team after practice and, and you simply share three, four, five minutes, uh, something that will encourage them, something biblical, just different ways where we can show people that God is still very important in a culture where he's becoming less important hmm. to those around us. All right, Andy, looking forward to seeing what God does with that. Thank you, Thank you so much for just giving your life to him and being used by him. It's just wonderful. And I encourage you to be praying for Andy and his family as they prepare for this transition, as well as for FCA District 8 and all the athletes who are or will be a part of all of this. What a blessing it is to be able to reach out to our next generation in the name of Christ. Thanks again, Andy, for being such a witness. Thank you. Well, February is Black History Month, and every week in February, Faith and Friends is highlighting one important figure in history. Thanks to Lima's Dorothy Lavelle Jones for sharing this week's information about our profile. Zach Bowers joins us now with more. 
Well, thank you, Jennifer. So far this month, we've profiled Sojourner Truth and George Washington Carver. This week, we'll introduce you to Fred Shuttlesworth. Shuttlesworth was born in 1922 in Alabama. He was a pastor of Birmingham, Alabama's First Baptist Church. In 1956, he reorganized the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights, which spearheaded the movement to integrate Birmingham schools, offices, and public facilities. Shuttlesworth worked closely with Martin Luther King Jr. and established the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1958. In later years, he moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, where he continued to work to create unity among the races. Well, it's time now for this week's Orthopedic Institute of Ohio's In the Community segment. This week's story takes us around the globe to the country of Slovakia, which is home to Pandora Gilboa's Anna Abelowska. Here, TV44's newest reporter, Matt Finkel, with the story. All the time I feel like I'm in a movie. Anna Abelowska is writing quite the script for herself. A native of Slovakia, she left friends and family back home to come to Ohio as an exchange student. So I came to the United States because I really wanted to know English and I really wanted to meet some new friends and mainly I really wanted to experience like new, new life, absolutely something different. The move has more than paid off. Anna is a standout on Pandora Gilboa's varsity basketball team and she's made some amazing new friends. The girls just love Anna. I mean, they, they kind of were drawn towards her and um, she just laughs with them. Every practice she's just all smiles and the girls just joke around with her like she's been here all four years. It's, it's really awesome to see. I couldn't ask for better teammates. I think we are a really, really amazing group of people and I really appreciate like they they took me between them and they get along with me like I'm part of them. Anna's positive demeanor also makes her a great role model. Anna has an incredible attitude and work ethic. She's such a hard worker on and off the floor. She gets good grades. She's a tremendous athlete. I can't ask for, for her to work any harder than what she does. And that hard work has translated to a lot of success on the court. She is full of enthusiasm. She's not afraid to lower that shoulder and drive to the basket, which is huge, um, especially in big games where they have big girls and she goes and gets that first basket uh, with a good layup. She really knows how to penetrate to the basket. Her unique story and strong play has made her a fan favorite at every PG home game. It's amazing when I like when people came to our games and they are like screaming and supporting us. It's pretty cool. First game, it was so funny when they all started cheering for her. She kind of got red and just got a huge smile on her face. You can tell she really appreciates all their support. Anna may be a long way from Slovakia, but her new friends here have made her feel right at home. People are really, really nice. What I really like here is the support, the support mainly in sports, because I feel like people here live uh, for the sports and everybody support each other, everybody help each other. Anna continues to excel both on and off the court. Her exchange program ends in July and she will return home to Slovakia, but not without memories of her time here in Ohio that will last a lifetime. Mark? Thank you, Matt. Congratulations are in order to five regional elementary schools who were recently awarded the Ohio Department of Education High Progress School of Honor. Letters sent to the schools from the Superintendent of Public Instruction stated, quote, clearly your school is doing whatever it takes to make sure that your students from all backgrounds have the opportunity to achieve academically. That makes you an outstanding example of what is possible when students, educators, parents, and community members work together believing that all students can succeed. Now just 37 schools in the entire state of Ohio received the award, including the following from our region, Finley's Lincoln Elementary, Kenton's Hardin Central Elementary, Parkway Elementary, Oakwood Elementary, and Paulding Elementary. Our congratulations to all those schools. Great to hear that report. Well, not long ago, if you are on our mailing list, you should have received one of these. Yes, for our new show, Faith and Friends Feud. Survey says... Faith and Friends Feud? Ben Reif is doing a great job as a, a host of a game show, so we sent out some questions and top 100 viewers were surveyed, right? Good answer, good answer, good answer! <laughs> I think it's something. We're on to something. Well, we are on to something. We certainly hope you will jump on board with us. Take a look at this survey. 
prayerfully think about how you can answer these questions and send it back to us. We definitely want to hear your input as we pray for the way God wants us to move forward with our station. Yeah, we encourage you to think through the questions, respond to them honestly. We want to hear from you. We conveniently included a self-addressed envelope to make it easier for you to respond. All you have to do is add the stamp. Thank you in advance for being involved with programming and other plans here at TV44. Well, another way to partner with TV44 is by attending, donating to, or volunteering for our annual auction. Now, with all the weather outdoors, the snow, the cold, you're probably not thinking about September and that big white tent and all the amazing items that will be up for bid. But we really think that by September there won't be any more snow on the ground. You think? Oh boy, I, I hope so. This past <laughs> September, one it of could the be new snow from the next winter oh. starting in September. We'll still have the auction. <laughs> <laughs> it's still going on. Now, this past September, one of the items up for bid was a dinner custom made by none other than Jennifer's husband, Dan Beck. Homemade marinara and Alfredo sauce, bow tie pasta, Jennifer's homemade bread, free range chicken, apple crisp. Aren't you getting hungry? This sounds amazing. Salad, four different types of dressings. It was the works. The winning bidder for that item was Dr. Wayne Feaster. And this month, the Feasters cashed in on that auction item hosting a dinner for some area friends. How was that night, Jennifer? It sounds like a wonderful night. Did you get to eat, first of they all? They did. They actually invited us oh, to nice. sit down and eat okay. with them, which was which was great. Mm -hmm. um, I am very blessed that my husband is quite the cook. And so for him, it was really a neat way for him to be able to donate to TV44 by using uh, one of the things that he just loves to do. Turns out, though, that Dr. Feaster also loves giving back to the TV44 station. He comes to the auction every year, and this is what he had to say about the dinner and the annual auction. Oh, this was a wonderful item. I just have this nice, full stomach and of some of the best food. Um, Daniel Beck has got to be the chef superb of the area, and uh, multi-course meal purchased from the auction, and it's been a wonderful night. I've, we invited friends over, and we had a lot of laughter, a lot of good times, and we really enjoyed it. So going to the auction is really wonderful. Lots of nice people. See my friends there. Get to enjoy the religious end of it. It's a wonderful time. Now, even though the auction is seven months away, it's never too early to start thinking about donations. Maybe this year you plan to purchase a different vehicle. Well, consider donating your current vehicle to our auction. Of course, items like antiques, furniture, trips, sports memorabilia are other great items that are always faring well with the auction crowd. And this year's TV44 auction, write it down, September the 6th. Well, how about a few more special things here at TV44? These taking place quite a bit sooner than <laughs> September. Wednesdays in February, it's the Black College Quiz. You enjoy playing along with our presidential trivia today? Well, Wednesday at 9 p.m., you have another chance to test your knowledge going head-to-head -head with some of our nation's best college students. February 25th, 7 p.m., they are back. Can you ever get enough of the Annie Moses Band? It's the newest concert. Where do we go from here? That's what I always ask at the end of an Annie Moses Band show. Where will they go from here? <laughs> And, and now I'll be answered. We featured him right here on Faith and Friends last week. George Washington Carver enjoy an entire one-hour special on the amazing inventor and scientist of faith in history, George Washington Carver. That'll air February 28th at 9 o'clock. Something special coming to Lima next week, specifically for women in the area. That's right. We'll find out more at next week's uh, coming up. I'm sorry, next month. Author Carol Kent is going to be in the area, and Dancy Moeller is with UNOH's Carlin Hefner to give us more details about this upcoming event. Dancy. Well, hello everyone. It is my great pleasure to introduce Carlin Hefner to you. Her Carlin is um, no stranger to our airwaves you've been on before, talking about um, women's conferences that mm -hmm. you hold at the UNO UNOH Event Center. And um, you have another one coming up that you've been busy organizing on March 14th and 15th. You want to tell us about that one? Sure. Yes, we are having a um, a conference and we're so excited to have uh, Carol Kent come and speak with us this year. Um, she is just going to be a huge blessing I think to the ladies in Lima and the surrounding areas and we just want to get the word out uh, that we have tickets on sale and, and she's coming Okay. to speak with us. And that's March 14th and 15th. That's a Friday and a Saturday, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, 
again, tickets are available, but they do go quickly. You know, we're right. known for procrastinating <laughs> and waiting till the last minute to get those, so it's sure. a good thing to get them now. Yes, uh, we have tickets on sale at UNOH Event Center. Um, I'm there from 8 to 4, and then Gifts of Joy is going to be selling them uh, starting today, and Lima Baptist Temple has them. Uh, Lima Community Church will have them. And if anyone else wants to sell them at their churches, we would be glad to get them to them. Okay. And this, again, is a speaker, Carol Kent, that is, um, she's familiar to a lot of our viewers, but mm -hmm. also you have a worship leader. Yes, we do. Um, John McKenna is uh, coming back from Detroit, Michigan, and he's going to be our worship leader. Uh, he was formerly the worship leader at Lima Community, and so now he'll be coming and gracing us with his singing. Very good. Now, I know that um, I attended a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. a wonderful event. I was not able, because of a prior commitment, to go on Saturday, but that's okay, isn't it? I mean, yes. you prefer sure. everyone attend both days, but right. um, it's one of those events that, that you're not held to those two days. Absolutely. Um, Carol will be speaking on Friday twice, and then on Saturday morning, she'll be speaking twice. Okay. So, I, you know, whatever you can catch is going to be fine, I'm sure. Um, it's regarding her new book that is just out this week. Oh, good. Unquenchable. Okay. And um, I think it will be something we all need to be um, hearing. It's having a faith that is unquenchable. Definitely. And so I think it'll be a great experience for everyone. Very good. And again, um, tickets are $25, but you can purchase those as a group. I know a lot of churches right. gather women together and, and take buses or vans exactly. to Exactly, and that's great. We have plenty of parking. Um, and yes, the tickets are $25. We're trying to keep the cost down yeah. you know, to where it's affordable. Um, and that will get you in for Friday and Saturday both. Okay, very good. And to reserve your seat, if you want to call, again, that number is 419-998-8807. And um, again, there are other locations around the Lima area that you can visit to get those tickets as well. So, Carlin, thank you so much for the information. Sure, thank you. And um, we wish you the best. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nancy. Well, we've been getting some great responses from several viewers. Thank you for your Pledges to TV44, Eleanor Smith in Rushylvania, and how about Richard Beitler from Bern, Indiana? We'll split the difference in Bluffton. Richard Campbell, thank you so much for being a part of our ministry here at TV44. As always, you can go online to WTLW.com to give, or you can call us, 419-339-4444. There's always the automatic withdrawal plan. That's how I like to do all my giving. Mm -hmm. It's just easy. That's right. Well, that is going to wrap it up for us on this edition of Faith and Friends. However, one more look at our scriptures for the day, Mark. Yeah, the first two verses were connected to Abraham Lincoln's inaugurations, Matthew 7 1, Judge not that you be not judged, and Revelation 16 7. And I, another from the altar, saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Both those verses in Lincoln's presidential inauguration are third verse, who. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Some great encouragement here in February as some of us feel like fainting in the snow, which would be a health hazard. Do not. <laughs> and don't forget, as we have looked at presidents all week long, be praying for the presidents. Be praying for your local government every single day. That can be a prayer point. They need the prayers, that's for sure. No question. Thanks again for being with us today. From Mark Coots, Andy Lynch, Matt Finkel, Zach Bowers, Dancy Moeller. Is that everybody? Ben Rife. And Ben Rife. Yes. <laughs> ben Rife. Almost forgot the most important. Ben's most important. Well, he's the most important talk you show, game show host that we have. Square. Just admit it. <laughs> We're going to be required to wear pocket squares now in the future. Check out our website to see if that's the case. <laughs> Thanks again for being with us. Bye-bye, everyone.